Hello students, looking at current affairs for 2nd April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 11, we will look at them in detail. The first one, Supreme Court questions Assam government over untraced foreign immigrants. So the Supreme Court has questioned the Assam government's efforts to trace over 70,000 illegal immigrants who have already mixed with the local population in the state. So this is the Ministry of Home Affairs affidavit actually it shows that there are 91,609 persons who have been declared illegal foreigners by the foreigners tribunals in Assam till March 2018. So out of these 72,486 are absconded. So the Chief Justice of India bench headed by Ranjan Gogoi he said that there might be even undeclared foreigners. These are official figures, so there will be undeclared foreigners too. So, what is, how will they be traced? So, it asked the Home Ministry regarding this. The Home Ministry explained that persons declared illegal foreigners by the tribunal either abscond immediately or are already untraceable. So, they have not been able to send them back. The foreigners who are there in the tribunals, you can, in the jails, the jail come detention centers which are there, there are six jail come detention centers in Assam. So, there are 829 persons declared foreigners by the tribunals and 115 foreigners who have completed their jail terms who are lodged in these six jail come detention centers in Assam. So, those who have already completed their term also have to be sent back to the country of their origin but that is a long process. The Home Ministry spelled out the obstacles in the nationality verification process for illegal foreigners too because they should give credible documents and the country where they would be sent, it should accept them. It should accept those documents and accept them. Only then they can be sent back. So that's there. So this is actually the hearing of Supreme Court is taking place on a petition filed by Harsh Mandar, an activist who spoke about the dismal living conditions within the four walls of the detention centers in Assam. So there are these six detention centers. You should know about them. They had come prominently in news also when uh, Trump administration was also having its detention centers in news that children and the families were separated in these detention centers at US-Mexico border. So similar things were happening here too and steps have been taken now to bring the families together too and you can see the figures which have been submitted about number of men, women and children in these detention centers. So here you can see. These are the key points in the Home Ministry's affidavit in the Supreme Court regarding the number of persons declared foreigners, how many are absconding, how many are presently there in these jail come detention centers in Assam. So it says finding out the country of origin of illegal foreigners is necessary to deport them. And it depends on what they say so and what documents they have. So it's a difficult process. And this is the detail regarding the detention centers. The six detention centers in Assam are listed here. And number of detainees, men, women and children in each. So this is there. Even earlier, the number of tribunals in Assam are also said to be, foreigners tribunals in Assam are said to be around 100. In 2012, Assam government had submitted a proposal to center to increase the number of foreigners tribunals. Earlier, they were 36. They wanted it to be 100. So center approved this proposal and 64 additional tribunals have been set up. Then next is former vice chairman of ILNFS arrested. So this is regarding the non-banking and financial company that is ILNFS infrastructure leasing and financial services. So it's an umbrella organization we have seen how it had 91,000 crore as outstanding loan and this is still unpaid so the former uh, leadership of ILNFS has been removed and new management has been brought in by the government. Government has put uh, has demanded that there should be no you know, no bankruptcy procedure procedure which should be initiated against ILNFS and government is trying to revive it. So now the revival is uh, taking place because it's a huge umbrella organization with huge asset also you can see. So if uh, you know, if it becomes insolvent or as such you can see total assets of the group is 1,15,000 crore worth. So and you can see number of subsidiaries are around 169. The ownership is also shown here. The major stake is with LIC, Life Insurance Corporation, the Japan's Oxus Corp, even Abu Dhabi Investment Authority has a stake, HDFC Bank, SBI, Central Bank of India, even ILNFS Employees Trust own a stake. So here what has been done is the government says that we will try to uh, revive the company and bring it back on track so that the outstanding loan can also be repaid. So for that the new management should not be pointed fingers at for the faults of the previous management. 
so that you know assurance has been sought and nobody should go and initiate insolvency proceedings because revival is taking place government is taking those steps so this has been the situation and now the presently the news is that former vice chairman and managing director of ilnfs has been arrested he is mr hari shankaran so he has been arrested by the serious fraud investigation office and he has been sent to police custody so he was arrested on the ground that he abused his powers in ilnfs through his fraudulent conduct in granting loans to entities which were not credit worthy or that had been that have been declared non performing assets so they were not performing assets and still loans were granted to them so this has wrong lost caused wrongful loss to the company and its creditors so he has been arrested here you can see the some questionable transactions of ilnfs are listed here like 2502 crore rupees was given to a group of companies of borrowers who used this money to repay existing debt obligations with ilnfs financial services so you take loan from the same umbrella organization or subsidiary and pay for another that was seen directors approved loans despite negative assessment by risk team so these were the two main types of frauds which were conducted one you can see regarding this 2500 into crores the group companies of borrowers means those who had borrowed from ilnfs ilnfs is a non banking finance company means it was giving loans for infrastructure infrastructure leasing company so that's what it was doing so borrowers through their group companies also used money to repay existing debt obligations of ilnfs and themselves also through group companies and this you can see 145 crores is they themselves used loans from ilnfs to repay the existing debt obligations so of course this is a fraud you can't take a loan to repay the loan to the same person because it's the same umbrella organization so this then as we saw despite negative assessment by risk team directors approved loans here also you can see directors sanction loans at a negative spread or limited spread to financially stressed companies then also there also another thing which was seen is that the funds borrowed for short term purposes were used for long term purposes so actually infrastructure loans will be for long term purposes they'll become start repaying later it will be a long term loan but then Uh, short term loans were used to fund these long term projects so that was a major issue too and same thing here also you can see loans to third parties were used by them to provide funds to ilnfs group companies so th- all this was seen you know see, these are questionable transactions of ilnfs on which questions are being raised now then next is forest fire threatening orissa's flora and fauna So Orissa has registered a sudden jump in forest fires across the state resulting in massive damage to flora and fauna. It is said as many as 5332 fire spots have been noticed since November 2018 which is the beginning of the forest fire season. So it is seen later it has increased exponentially because in March 2019 alone in this month 4495 fire spots were registered. so this is quite high so fires detected were detected you know by moderate resolution imaging spectrometer radio spectro radiometer the resolution of 1 km by 1 km so in the month of april this was started 11 fires have been detected by this moderate resolution imaging spectro radiometer which is known as modis so technology is also being used to detect fire but what is the key is early detection of fire because once the fire spread starts spread spreading you know the conflagration when it becomes a conflagration then it, it it cannot be prevented it becomes difficult to even approach it due to intense heat generated so it said that apart from causing huge loss to timber and other fruit and leaf bearing trees apart from the flora being affected creepers of the forest been affected forest fires also destroy wildlife and the habitat then next is india gets surveillance satellite so isro has launched country's first electronic surveillance satellite emisat it has been launched in a 748 km orbit from shriharikota in coastal andhra pradesh along with it 28 small satellites of international customers have also been put in orbit this was in 748 km orbit the secondary satellites went in 504 km orbit so this we have already discussed in news in detail how this is the first time that you know many firsts for isro are taking place this is the first electronic surveillance satellite as you can see too and uh, you can see it be elint L- means electronic intelligence so this is space based electronic intelligence which will be possible through it so it's a 468 436 kg 
aircraft, uh, spacecraft, which is MESET. So it will add teach to situational awareness of armed forces because it will provide another dimension to ELINT, that is electronic intelligence. So presently, currently, land or aircraft based ELINT is being used. So what does electronic intelligence do? It will provide location and information of hostile radars placed at the borders. ISRO has said, only said that it has built a satellite for DRDO payload which will measure electromagnetic spectrum. So the defense details have not been provided but this uh, that it is a space based electronic intelligence now is being put forth. Emi said the details are provided here. And this is the PSLV C45, which has been used for uh, carrying the payload, along with 28 international satellites. The international customers are also mentioned here. 24 satellites are from US, and four others are two from Lithuania, one from Spain, and one from Switzerland. So, next launch will be PSLV C45 launching VSAT 2B in May 2019. And we have already discussed this is the first mission of an improved or new variant of PSLV, PSLV QL. Then you can see the payloads, payloads carried by PSLV C45, this uh, automatic identification system for ISRO, automatic packet repeating systems for MSAT, India and advanced retarding potential analyzer for ionosphere studies. So these are the payloads on PSLV C45 because the fourth stage we have already discussed will be orbiting and will be carrying these experiments in space for six months. So the last stage will not become a space debris but would be used for this purpose for experiments. Then next is and this is regarding MSAT again the details provided here about this launch. And this is regarding electronic intelligence too. What does it imply? So, it collects the source and direction of arrival of a broad range of radar emitters. So, the, the frequency, pulse, you know, etc. Is, uh, is detected. The next is April may to be warmer than normal, says IMD. So, Indian Meteorological Department has said that the average maximum temperature for April to June are likely to be warmer than half a degree in several places in central and northwest India and warmer by more than one degree in northeastern states. So, normal temperatures refer to mean temperatures during the months Ma April to June from 1981 to 2010. So, during this period, the mean temperatures during the months April to June are called normal temperatures. So, the present temperature is, you know, prediction is compared to these normal temperatures as such. So, the El Nino, an anomalous heating in the central Pacific Ocean is also said to be linked to droughts in India, maybe playing a leading role in this matter too, that warming is taking place. So, you should know about El Nino conditions also. So, weak El Nino conditions have been developing. It is a phenomena which occurs in once in 3 to 5 years. So, what is El Nino also you should know. We will see. It actually is a Spanish term which means Christ child. So, it happens during the month of December or so when it starts. So, that is why it is named so. So, El Nino, during El Nino you can see winds across the Pacific change direction. So, instead of blowing east to west, they start blowing west to east. So, this changes the weather patterns around the Pacific. So, this is the Pacific Ocean you can see and this is the area where El Nino conditions develop. This is South America and this is Australia. So, here you can see. So, it occurs once in 3 to 5 or 3 to 7 years. There is no fixed pattern to this. And this you can see is the El Nino phenomena. So, during a normal year, you can see there is cold water along the South American coast and here you can see the wind blows from you know, from South America towards Australia. So, here there is equatorial winds gathering warm water pool towards the west. But during El Nino year, the winds reverse and warm air moves from Australia towards South America and you can see the warm waters also. So, winds along with it, the water also gets warm. So, warm waters move eastward. This is El Nino. And during El Nino year, the rainfall in India is affected. It is associated with drought conditions as we saw. Then next is Nirav tried to get Vanuashu citizenship. So Nirav Modi, 
the person uh, main accused in the Punjab National Bank fraud case. It is said he applied for citizenship of Vanuatu, which is a South Pacific Ocean nation located close to Australia. So, Vanuatu authorities actually turned down his request, which he submitted in December 2017. So now CBI and Enforcement Directorate have registered case against uh, Mr. Modi and and further details are also coming forth. He, it is said he made 12 employees operating from Dubai and Hong Kong ship to Cairo in Egypt. And you know, they were made dummy directors in shell companies controlled by him abroad and money was transferred. So steps have been taken by him uh, in this manner too has come to the fore now. So 11 employees failed to uh, actually manage to fly out of Cairo and the enforcement directorate has recorded the statements of nine of these two are said to be in dubai right now so this is the location of one show also shown here and this is regarding the pnb fraud case Punjab national bank fraud case so it took place over a seven year period you can see it was jewela nirav modi who actually imports diamonds so they you know then make high-end products and sell them so he approached Punjab national bank for lous what are lous letter of undertaking you should understand it is a bank guarantee that allows the customer to raise money from another bank's foreign branch in the form of short-term loan so the complete detail of this stress asset is also of this entire case is provided here you can see it was in jan 2018 when Punjab national banks Brady house branch in mumbai discovered irregularities in issue of lous letters of undertaking so this came to the fore then and you can see so head office in Delhi alerted and, de and detailed reports were submitted. Punjab National Bank approached CBI and RBI to internal action was also initiated. Suspensions were undertaken by Punjab National Bank. So this was regarding irregularities in LOU. So what were these irregularities also we will see. So this CBI registered the FIR and bank made first public disclosure estimating fraud of 280 crore which actually later, you know, SEBI exchanges were informed that it was 11,300 crore fraud. So, Punjab National Bank scans records of branches and this is the detail which came through. So, Enforcement Directorate also registered complaints. So, what was this? You can see LOUs are used for diamond trade. So, they issued for 90 days. But bank staff issued these LOUs to Nirav Modi for 365 days. Without, and they went on without detection. So, and every time they were renewed. So, uh, you can see it was Gokul Nath Shetty who remained on the same desk for years and was flouting norms of rotating people every few months. So, banks internal audit and RBI inspection also failed to notice the irregularities. So, this is the whole detail here. So, the government has started, uh, you know, attaching, it has seized 6,000 crore worth of assets of Nirav Modi. So, that's the case. So, now he has been detected in UK and he has actually been jailed there too has been denied bail and he has to be extradited so that extradition process will go on the way Vijay Mali extradition process is also going on in UK so that's the present scenario and this present news is only that he the news has come that he had uh, tried to acquire citizenship of Vanuatu too so which was denied so that's the detail then next is despite objections SSC chief given extension so this is regarding staff selection commission chairman Ashim Khurana so, his resignation was demanded by students due to the alleged paper leaks in 2018. So, uh, you can see it was this paper leak which took place, mass cheating, you know, allegedly, which resulted in the exam also being suspended. So, there are, are around 1.9 lakh young people who had attempted the second round of combined graduate level examination which was conducted by Staff Selection Commission in Feb 2018 to fill just over 9,000 vacancies. And your paper leak and mass cheating resulted in this exam being suspended and aspirants protesting on the streets. So they were demanding resignation of the chairman of staff selection commission due to this case. But then it is seen that uh, the SSC chairman was given an extension of tenure through retrospective amendment of rules. And this extension it is said was approved by prime minister himself despite multiple written objections from law ministry and UPSC. So this all has come forth through an RTI reply. RTI queries. So, PM's noting on the file was withheld from RTI applicant on the ground that it is confidential. So, this again questions have been raised that uh, how Mr. Kurana's, Kurana's tenure was illegally and unconstitutionally extended. PM granting in patronage is granting patronage to corruption in the nation's largest recruitment agency. So, UPSC is for higher level government appointments and staff selection commission is for uh, you know, staff level. So, you can see. So, the history of SSC is also given here, you can see. So, 
it selects staff for different posts in different ministries and departments of government of india and in subordinate offices so it's it's an attached office it's a, to the department of personal and training it comprises of a chairman two members and a secretary come control of examination so this you can see it was established in 1975 uh, and it was called subordinate Sum uh, services commission so this was based on the recommendation of estimates committee of parliament too and it was a year late uh, two years later in 1977 that the name was changed it was no it is no longer called subordinate services commission but staff selection commission the next is gst collection at 1.06 lakh crore in march clocked the highest ever so GST collections in March 2019 hit 1.09 1.06 lakh crore, the highest in the history of GST in India, and this is the fourth time that monthly collections have crossed 1 lakh crore mark. So the average collections in the year stand at 98,114 crores, and the GST collection had previously crossed 1 lakh crore mark in April, October, and January 2019, which is shown here in this figure too. This is the GST collection. So in December 2018, uh, you can see, and then in March 2019, it has, uh, sorry, in April 2018, then in uh, October 2018, Jan 2019, and now in March 2019, that 1 lakh crore mark was breached by GST collection. And this is regarding March 2019, total GST collection segregation, central GST, state GST, integrated GST, and the CES collection. Then next is J&J baby shampoo samples failed quality test. So Johnson Johnson baby shampoo samples failed quality test conducted by the state of Rajasthan. So Rajasthan Drugs Control Organization took the samples of J&J baby shampoo from two batches and it is said that they failed the quality test as they contained harmful ingredients. So it is said formaldehyde had been discovered in these samples and formaldehyde is used in building materials and is known as a carcinogen means it causes cancer it may cause cancer so actually johnson and johnson shampoo earlier included this uh, ingredient quaternium 50 which is a formaldehyde releasing preservative but the new formulation has removed this uh, as such so now the new formulation the new bottles which are there they do not contain this quaternium 50 and formaldehyde is a carcinogen it is present in shampoo liquid baby soaps nail polish when it contains this preservative, quaternium 15 or DMDM hydantoin, hide etc. So, you can see. So, it is linked to cancer, eye, nose and throat irritation and even skin rashes. Then next is, core sector growth quickens to 2.1% in Feb. So, the core sector growth accelerated in February 2019 to 2.11% from 1.5% 1 in January 2019. So this was uh, you know, a three months slowing trend now. So there are eight core sectors within the IIP index of industrial production. So that you should know about. So this is the fact. So from compared to Jan 2019, Feb 2019 core sector growth is high. So here you can see the course eight core sectors mentioned. At least that is important. Monthly data may not be important. Every month that changes. But the eight core sectors in IIP, index of, index of industrial production, the base year of which is 2011-12 for IIP. And you can see the, uh, the weightage as such given to eight core sectors also you should know, which is there. So, here you can see. It is coal, crude oil, natural gas, refined products, refinery products, which are amongst the four eight core, uh, four among the eight eight core sectors. And... Uh, other four are fertilizers, steel, cement and electricity. So these are core uh, you know, sectors which you are used for further development and you know, infrastructure building too. The next is the last news, SEBI Mulls SRO for Investment Advisors. So Securities and Exchange Board of India has proposed a self-regulatory organization for the growing number of investment advisors. So the issue of quality of advice is there, which these investors give. Then, so that's why a self-regulatory organization is presently proposed. A consultation paper has been released by SEBI on the matter that the regulatory framework for SROs should be strengthened by introducing features such as governing board with public interest directors and a clear policy for arbitration and dispute resolution. 
So there have been complaints of alleged charging of exorbitant fees by such investment advisors, you know, assurance of returns from them, misconduct by these investment advisors, etc. So the regulator has proposed a governing board with at least 50% public interest directors along with 25% representation each of shareholder directors and elected representatives. So this is a proposal now. So these are the news items. Thank you.